let's talk about it because I am really excited to see what's going to happen in this set specifically because what was the last time we saw BB's blue card? I don't know, but what I will say about this is that this is definitely going to be a little bit more of just BB. <laughs> Sorry, trying to just, <laughs> just trying to take, take a breath. It's all right. <laughs> Are you tired of me talking? It's literally no. not even my fault. <laughs> <It's just, laughs> I'm bored. You need to wait. Yes. So this this is gonna be kind of sl definitely slower pace than what we yeah. just saw here. Uh, like, ah, oh, man, they're just being extremely careful because both players know exactly what the other one, what they can do if they get their hands on them. So, as it stands, just not trying to overextend in any way, shape, or form. Being very grounded also, BB, you notice, not barely going into the air at all, recognizing that Rob's anti-airs are just better than his. And, you know, that's the thing, too. I want to actually be completely honest. Aside from dying at, I don't even know what percent that was at. That, that he was died. I mean, that she, um, that she died, Miss Dill. But that was, that was, that was quick. And we're still at 73%. This is honestly a really good lead for, you know, Vivi. But another thing I've also kind of been noticing is how much of, um, you know, Dill, how she's been actually using the platforms and just the understanding of the platforms already because of how much that plays into a point of, like, Lucario. I feel like Lucario, once you understand how the platform layouts play into this character, it just denies so much area and so much space because then Lucario can't do all these wave bounces that you would normally see from Vivi. Vivi is yeah. the king of just wave bouncing all over the place and denying him all that free range. Oh! Yield you a reflect that you, I, I don't know how she knew, but she knew. Oh. And apparently we got Jablock and we got Vivi trying to do all the magic, the, the king of Anubis, that's what's yeah, going well, on here. I don't the, know. The thing is, there's only, when there's at zero, he has no aura. There's only so much he can do off of the Jablock. So I definitely like the idea of extending it as much as he could. But as it stands here, this is such an awkward place to be for both players. Because if you're Dill, you can still die. But like, you're mostly fine unless you do more damage to VB. So it's like, do you maybe just not do damage in the hopes that the problem will just go away? I it's, mean, <laughs> at this point, she can't just pray. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know how much like she's you know into that, but I don't, I, I don't I, know. you can try. Pray to Hassa 3000. Well, I, mean, I don't know. You can do it by gifting subs. I don't know. Pray for Dill. Pray for Dill. She finds a way to get the stock. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, <laughs> gotta get my name. Sorry. Ooh. Oh, back air. Oh, oh man, that was. I was expecting to see, like, the turnaround happen, where, like, you know, BB lets himself get beat up for a little while, and then the switch flips. But Dill put him in disadvantage and didn't let him flip that switch. Really smart to go for the finisher right then and there, because, you know, as Lucario has more and more percent on him, the threat just mounts and mounts and mounts. And that's also the thing, too, I like about this matchup, is that, like, just obviously from playing BB so much, BB, like, specifically also has a little bit of a hard time and disadvantage once you actually understand how to play VB in disadvantage, you end up in situations like that where he has to recover very weirdly. Lucario does not have too many, um, you know, recovery paths because he can just die because of the way his head bumps when recovering. He has to find some way to get around a lot of characters, and that just puts him in such a bad position. And that's where that we're at right now. He's at 73%, and he's still trying to find a way to take this stock because, I mean, it is Lucario. But Lucario yeah, but is very close to dying right now. It is. This is this is so important. This instant right here. If Dill can find that one setup into the kill right here now, it'll seal out the game. But if Vivi even manages to get one more, oh, one more solid hit and even up the stock counts, all of a sudden, well, we're all all bets are off. We are at the races at that point. And here we go. Open the gates. I feel like that They're was also <laughs> a little bit of a bad position for Dill right there because. She was a little, she wasn't under the ledge, but like she definitely doesn't look like she was ready to get anything there. But this is definitely more possible for Dill to still keep it clean because I'm gonna be completely honest. We read Lucario. Don't do the Lucario thing, please, BB. We already know BB do the Lucario <laughs> thing. I don't know. Oh boy. Look at this 144%. Two hits now at 74. Is that, is it dead? You're kidding. You're literally kidding. <laughs> You're literally kidding. Are you are you are you serious? Honestly, this is why I, I love watching Lucario. The push and pull of the game. It's unlike any other character that's out there. And expended the double jump. That was kind of what did it. 
expended the double jump and went for this really high neutral air. Hold Shield on a second. Let's, wait, wait, wait. Can we, if we could go back on that stock right here. Um, rewind. Actually, about 210 frames here. So, double jumped, if I remember. Yeah, yeah. Double jumped. But notice why mm -hmm. Bill double jumped. It's that VV threatened, jumps up here, commits nothing else beyond that, forces out this double jump. And at that point, like, that resource being extended here, are we going to see another jump? A dash back. That's what did it. It's the, in these situations where the kills actually happen from these, you know, the, the slight advantage state. It comes from baits, tiny mm. bits of movement. Your opponent is already panicking. You're, if you're Dill, you're like, oh, no, I'm at 70. I'm at death percent. I was winning this entire time, and now I'm above? And then as soon as you see, you know, uh, as soon as you see him just run a little bit, you hit that nair button, and that's exactly what VV was waiting for. Really smart right there. Those tiny little interactions, basically forcing, uh, giving the illusion of choice as uh, VV takes game one. And here's another thing too, because along with that, there's another like kind of layer to this, because a lot of the time, whenever you do get in these situations where Lucario is definitely more than capable of taking it back, there could have been a lot of other things, you know, Dill could have even used her, um, you know, propeller, the jet, the thing that Rafa has. Mm. She definitely could use that to stall out, you know, her jump a little bit more, but that's the thing with Lucario. A lot of the time, Lucario can just make these things happen, and if you're not really, like, you know, wary of your disadvantage, you end up in situations where you're just dead. That was two seconds, and she died when she was only at 50. And this is, I, I, I just have to talk about that, I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's worth also noting that the bait that Vivi did, which is this, mm. this, this run, kind of not, it's not like he jumped at her. Mm. So I think that in that instance, Doe kind of just the fear overtook. Mm. And as we move into the rest of this game, that fear just can't be the driving force because that's exactly what Vivi loves for the opponent to be uh, trapped in. Absolutely. Vivi does make really good use of his opponent's disadvantage options, and that's exactly how a lot of the time his skills just end up working out. He has a lot of aura, as Lucario does, and he just ends up winning. And also, this is kind of a thing that I've been... I haven't really seen too much of Vivi recently, but I do hope he's been putting into use. I definitely love seeing the way people use the stage layouts. Stage layouts are super important in this game, understanding how a lot of things happen when you're able to approach, when you're able to not approach, when you're able to just understand what people like to do in certain positions when they're under a platform or yeah. when they're, you know, over places. But And you notice, like, when Vivi is positioning himself, that's actually, okay, that's the second time he did that air dodge in. And first time around, got away with it, but now it feels like Dill is starting to pick up on those panic habits. That's going to be it, though. And now, once more, we have Vivi at 124%. Dill needs to close out this stock immediately. But can't do it with no rage on Dill. That uh, that rotor arm, extremely high base knockback. Not the best knockback growth though. And that was an amazing recovery. That wow. Was, wow. Thirty-two. Wait. Yeah, just, you eat thirty-two now. Oh, oh. Uh, no invincibility. And the attack. <laughs> that was <laughs> attack. He got. She, she, she got sour spot of the down air and BDDI towards the state and teched it. That's oh my. what are these these options just working out? The advantage state is not there for Dill right now. He's being too tricky. Just zip his up, zooping all over the place. You were talking about remember how in game one he wasn't mm -hmm. moving that much? It felt like he was locked down. Not the case anymore. He's moving everywhere. Absolutely, and I also feel like a little bit of Miss Dill's disadvantage has also been playing a little bit into a factor that we've seen a lot of times how she's reacted to situations wherever she's gotten hit from, um, you know, Aura Spear. That was a very good way on, you know, BB's part because he knew that she's gotten hit by the same thing at least two times already. And that was just a perfect reaction on his part, just waiting to get that kill. And now we're at a situation again, previous to, um, similar to the first game where Dill is at 109% and trying to, you know, reverse this. I mean, it's definitely more than possible. She did it the first game. But oh. yep, we are going to see that kill right there with a the nice, Forest Palm taking off that second stop, and this is looking a little bit scary for Miss Dill. Okay. I like this though, that Dill being a lot more patient, you know, jumps, but then fades back. Doesn't want to commit to anything if she's not confident that it's the right time. And the right time is right now. Actually evening things up completely. Zero percentage separating these two. Oh, no, one percentage. You went too close to the blast zone. No. And this is what I was talking about. She, like, actually started, you know, 
you know, or not using her projector, whatever you call it, Rob. Sorry, love you, Rob. Anyways, um, who she was starting. <laughs> who loves this big robot thing, Ru Rupert? He's so cute with the little eyeball laser thingy. Imagine getting down thrown in real life. They ain't so cute now, is it? Oh, that's not cute at all. Also, yo, oh, yeah, fifty-seven percent against this freaking dog that kills you at like literally two percent. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I promise you, I don't have any resentment to this character. I promise you, no, I'm literally, I promise you, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, but yeah, for sure, getting back to this little neutral situation over here, this is again a little of the situation where Dill is just trying to be very careful, just trying to play in the air a lot, denying a lot of space. But if Vivi has anything to say about it, that Overspear is definitely gonna say something to her. Hey, but look at this completely even in percent. And then honestly, I think Mims Vivi the favor, especially with stage positioning like that. Once more, the Aura Sphere to Aura Sphere to back air seals the deal. That's exactly how we saw game one end. But that time around, very different situation. Trapped at the ledge instead. Mm -hmm. But uh, can you believe this? Look at, the, look at the percent. Look at it. Okay, you also, can't look at it anymore. Did, did, uh, she jumble, did she double jump into that? Yeah, she did. Did she? I'm pretty sure. It's, why does Rob's burner have a little halo effect similar to because jumping? Wait, where was the double jump? He doesn't have a double jump circle? Oh, no. When he double jumps, he exhausts fire instead of the circle? I've never known this in my life. No wonder it's... Oh, that's so interesting. I know, so, I, are you Ghost of Devon right now? Okay, so Ghost of Devon just informed us that uh, when Rob double jumps, normally you know how a character has a uh -huh. little tiny halo as they go initiate their double jump in the air. Rob doesn't have that. Instead, it's a bit of a burner effect that comes I mean, out of this. I'm going to be completely uh, honest, though. It's a little bit noticeable when you see Rob double jump. Wait. Oh, yeah, okay. Do all the... But fine characters don't have double jump circles. All of them don't? What about Charizard? Oh. And I guess, nice. yeah, I guess there's a specific, yeah. No, that's that's really interesting because they have very distinctive jump animations. Neat. Thank you for letting us know that, Devin. Honestly, I'm going to be completely honest. You know, while we're waiting for this next match, I just love that, like, I get to embody, you know, like, my, my daily energy. <laughs> like, honestly, don't tell me I don't look like a freaking stoner right now. Like, I, like just.